Hello everyone. Thank you for watching my movie. I'm Toshihumi Naomi from Kobe University, and today I'm talking about this paper of last year and the work in progress in collaboration with two of my students, Suro Kim and Keito Takeuchi in Kobe University, and also Shi Izo, who is a postdoc in Stockholm University. Actually, she is giving a talk on another collaboration of ours, uh, which is about string rich trajectories on Doshita space. So I would be very happy if you watch her movie as well. Okay, so the title of my talk is Country Map of ZFT Landscape. As you know, in the past decade, our understanding of ZFT landscape has been well developed. The so-called positivity bound on effective interactions will be a typical example for this. Following these developments, uh, recently we started to make one more step to classify regions of the EFT landscape based on properties of UV series, just as we draw a country map of our real world. In particular, we would like to apply such ideas to the cosmological collider program. So keywords of my talk are cosmological collider, positivity bounds, and beyond. So let me start from motivation and summary of the main results. As I mentioned, my talk is about the Cosmos Calculator program, which is one of the main targets in this workshop. The idea of Cosmos Calculator is to utilize primordial non gaussianities as a very high energy particle collider. So far, it has been well studied how to probe new particles with a mass around the Hubble scale by using soft limits of primordial non gaussianity The motivation of my talk is to enlarge the scope of the cosmological collider. In particular, we would like to address the question how to get the information of heavy, heavy particles with a mass heavier than the Hubble scale, which are often predicted by extra dimensions, grand unified theory, and string theory. To explore this direction, let me just remind you the story for ordinary collider experiments. So if the energy scale of your particle collider is high enough, then we may just look for resonance signals of new particles. On the other hand, if our collider is not powerful enough, in this case, what we may observe is the effective interaction. And historically speaking, weak bosons were predicted by studying unitarity and angular dependence of the Fermi interaction. So in this way, we know that theoretical consistency is useful to clarify what kind of particles, what kind of UV particles are behind the effective interaction, which we may observe at low energy. And we would like to apply such an idea in the context of cosmological quantum physics. More concretely, we are now trying to draw a country map of the EFT landscape using theoretical consistency such as entirety. In this talk, I will introduce two of our recent works. Before going into details, let me first summarize the main results of these projects to share our idea with you. So first, let me introduce this paper of last year on positivity bounds and the beyond. In this paper, we studied the EFT of a shift symmetric scale of phi which is identified with the inflaton. Under certain approximation, this EFT is characterized by two parameters, alpha and beta. So here, alpha is for the four derivative operator, and beta is for the six derivative operator. So in particular, we study the relation between signs of effective interactions and spins of heavy particles, whose exchange generate effective interactions at IR. What is very known as positivity bounds is that consistency of UV scattering amplitude implies that the four derivative operator alpha has to have a positive coefficient. And here is a, a two-dimensional EFT space parameterized by alpha and beta, and positivity implies that this gray region is prohibited by theoretical consistency. On the other hand, this allowed region can be thought of as EFT landscape. What we did in our paper is to classify this EFT landscape into several countries based on spins of heavy particles. And the main result is the following. 
So under the same assumption of the standard positivity bounds, we demonstrated that the sign of beta, sign of six derivative of beta, depends on the spin of heavy particles, which dominate in the scattering process. And this map is a summary. So for example, if your model is in this region, your EFT can be UV completable by heavy scalars without introducing uh, higher spin states. On the other hand, if your EFT is in this blue region, uh, the UV theory has to accommodate higher spin states. In this way, by looking at effective interactions, uh, in this case beta, which cannot be constrained by positivity bounds, then we may get some information of heavy particles, which are necessary for UV compression. This is the idea of drawing a country map of the EFT landscape. Next, let me explain the main result of our ongoing work. In this work, we are now trying to uh, draw a similar map of the EFT of inflation, which is suitable for studying observable non gaussianities In the EFT of inflation, primordial three-point functions are captured by this effective Lagrangian. In particular, the nonlinearity parameter FNL is captured by two parameters CS, speed of sound, and M3, which appears in this effective Lagrangian. And for example, the Planck experiment provided constraints in this two-dimensional EFT space. So here, the horizontal axis is for the speed of sound, and the vertical axis is for M3, after some rescaling into C3 tuba. The question we addressed in this context is which region of this two-dimensional EFT space can be realized by UV series with heavy scales without spinning fields. So in other words, we are asking uh, which EFT parameter space can be UV completable without introducing spinning fields, higher spin fields. So far, we have shown that if the UV theory has a single heavy scalar, in addition to pi, massless pi, then perturbative integrity implies that M3, or in other words, C3 shader, has to be zero. So if the UV theory has a single heavy scalar, the corresponding low energy EFT has to be on this red line. So we cannot go away from this line without introducing more fears. So complete analysis is still ongoing, but in the case of much more heavy scalars, we can indeed show that we can go away from this line. And now we are trying to identify the boundary of this allowed region, uh, which will be hopefully appear soon. Okay. So in this way, using theoretical consistency, we may classify the EFT space into several regions, depending on the spin and number of species of heavy particles, which are necessary for UV compression. If the future experiments pin down a point in the EFT landscape, then we may probe UV physics based on our, con our country map. This is the idea in the summary of my talk. In the rest of my talk, I explain some more details of each project one by one. Okay, so let me explain the paper of last year about positivity bounds and the beyond. As I mentioned earlier, there we studied relation between signs of effective interactions and spins of heavy particles in the infraton EFT. For technical simplicity, we focused on four-point effective interactions presented here. So in particular here, we have no operators which contains uh, six or more phi. In general, uh, such a higher order operators are important to discuss observable non gaussianities with FNL larger than one. However, uh, this four-point sector is theoretically very controlled, and it is known that it's useful for a proof of concept of theoretical studies. Indeed, uh, many theoretically elegant works uh, of recent study are in this region. So even though there is some limitation in the sense of phenomenology, uh, we, employed this set, we employed this setup as a first step for a proof of concept in this direction. Okay, so let me give a brief review of positivity bounds. So let us consider the effective action of a shift symmetric scale phi, which is identified with the infrared. The first term is the standard kinetic term, and the second term is a four-derivative operator, which is a leading correction to the kinetic term. 
Such effective interaction shows up, for example, after integrating out heavy scalar sigma with a cubic coupling like this. So here, heavy scalar sigma is coupled to massless phi by cubic derivative coupling. So if you consider four-point scattering of phi, you have exchange of sigma, but in the low energy limit, this exchange of sigma is approximated by local contact terms. And in this setup, for derivative coupling alpha, it's given in terms of the cubic coupling G and the mass like this. So we can notice here is that the coupling alpha is always positive for whatever value of G and N. It is essential because, first, uh, the, the sign of the denominator is associated to the sign of propagator, which is fixed by unitarity. And also, in the numerator, we have g square, uh, which is because uh, we have, scattering, uh, we have a coupling square in the scattering process. So in this way, essentially because of unitarity, we always have positivity of alpha in this setup, at least in, in this setup. Actually, more generally, it is well known that positivity of alpha follows only from consistency of UV scattering amplitude, uh, such as unitarity, analyticity, and locality. In particular, the optical theorem implies that the imaginary part of forward amplitude has to be positive, and this condition can be translated into positivity of alpha using analyticity and locality of the amplitude. And this is a very known positivity bound. And this positivity bound is very universal and elegant consistency condition on low energy effective field theories. So it has been actively studied recently. But on the other hand, I would say that from the phenomenology point of view, it is not necessarily very good, in the sense that Detailed information, such as uh, spins of UV particles, is obscure at the cost of universality. And in the following, I would like to demonstrate that signs of effective interactions, which are not constrained by positivity bounds, are ph phenomenologically useful, and it can be used to probe spins of heavy particles. So for this purpose, let us consider the next two leading order correction in the previous EFT. Up to the six derivative operators, the EFT is characterized by two parameters, alpha and beta. So here, alpha is the previous one for the four derivative operator. On the other hand, beta is for the six derivative operator. By using this EFT, we can evaluate uh, low energy scattering amplitudes like this. So this is based on derivative expansion at IR. And here, beta term, the second term, vanishes in the forward limit, where t goes to zero. So we have uh, at least one t, so it vanishes in the forward limit. On the other hand, by generalizing standard positivity argument to non-forward amplitudes, uh, we may write down the amplitudes in terms of UV data, like this. So here, n is a level of the intermediate states. And for notational simplicity, I used a summation symbol, but it can be integral if you consider branch cut associated to loops. But in any case, uh, integrity implies this, con uh, this form of scattering amplitudes. And here, Mn and Ln are the mass and spin of intermediate states, and Gn characterize the size of uh, three-point amplitudes. Also here, we assume that the amplitude is bounded by a squared in the ridge limit with a small negative t. Okay. The main point of this expression is that the first term appearing here is responsible for correct factorization on the complex S-plane. So for example, this term is for the external pole and this, the second term is for the internal pole. And another point is that the spin dependence, the ln dependence, appears through the Legendre polynomial. So since we are considering non-forward amplitude, this, uh, this part is uh, non-unity, so that we can distinguish spin 
by looking at t-dependence. Okay. Now we have two expressions of scattering amplitude based on IR data and also based on UV data. So by comparing these two expressions, uh, we can match IR data with UV data. And the result of the matching is the following. So here alpha and beta are given in terms of Gn, Mn, and also Ln. So first, we find that alpha is always positive for whatever UV compression. This is a standard positivity bound. On the other hand, the sign of beta depends on spins, which means Ln of intermediate states. And actually, in this setup, because of exchange symmetry, the spin Ln of intermediate states has to be an even, even integer. So Ln has to be 0, 2, 4, 6 and higher. And what we can see here is that uh, the coefficient beta is positive for intermediate scalars. On the other hand, beta is negative if we have a higher spin states, higher spin intermediate states with spin 2, 4, 6 and higher. So in this way, sign of beta can be used to probe spins of heavy states. And this is a summary of the obtained results. So here is a two-dimensional UFT space parameterized by alpha and beta, and the standard positivity bounds exclude these gray regions. So this is a UFT landscape, and we have classified this UFT landscape into two countries based on the spin of the heavy particles. Uh, which generates intermediate, uh, which generates in effective interactions. So, for example, if you consider extra dimensions and the KK graviton is the main source of effective interaction, then the main source is spin two. So your EFT has to be located in this in this blue region. On the other hand, if uh, heavy scalars are the main source, then your EFT has to be in this white region. And if you can pin down our world by using experiment into some point in this EFT space, then we can get some information of UV physics. So this is the idea and the main result of this first part. Uh, perhaps uh, before going to the next topic, it is interesting to mention string theory example. So for example, we can think of a situation where the massless scalar is a part of open super string. And if we consider some simple compactification, we can show that uh, the beta is zero, uh, and so the EFT is located on this boundary. In this case, we can explicitly check that there is, uh, there is an exact cancellation between scalar contributions and higher spin contributions. So this provides an example of UV series, which has non-positive beta and so requires higher spin states for UV compression. Okay, so that's all for the first topic. In the rest of my talk, let me explain our work in progress on perturbative unitarity. As I mentioned, the target of this project is EFT of inflation, which is suitable for studying observable non nationalities FNL, bigger than one. In particular, this EFT is based on spontaneous symmetry breaking of approximate Oshita conformal symmetry. And the corresponding number boson boson is identified with inflaton fluctuation or equivalently the scalar curvature perturbation theta. By using non-realization, the EFT of two cubic order is given like this. In particular, we have two parameters, CS, the speed of sound, and also M3 associated to cubic coupling here. And such EFT is obtained after integrating out heavy fields with a mass heavier than the Hubble scale. So this is EFT of inflation. And we would like to draw a country map of EFT of inflation in a similar way to the first project. In particular, in this project, uh, we used perturbative unitarity as a consistency condition to constrain UV series. And then we try to give a dictionary matching IR data with UV data and discuss the implication of perturbative unitarity. 
So in this talk, for illustration, let us consider a model of number Goldstone boson pi and the heavy scale sigma. So here is Lagrangian we consider. And the first one is Lagrangian for the Goldstone boson. And the second one is uh, kinetic term, mass term, and self-coupling of sigma. And the third one is a mixing of heavy field sigma and num Goldstone boson pi. And these interactions can be specified by using non-linearization of num Goldstone boson. And here we have four, four UV parameters, the mass of sigma and the mixing G1, G2, and self-coupling of lambda up to cubic couplings. So as long as we are interested in frame model sequence functions, this setup is uh, useful enough. Okay. And now we would like to use part of the unitarity as a UV constraint. And if for, in four dimensions, part of the unitarity implies that endpoint amplitude has to be bounded by energy to the four minus n. So for example, in the case of four-point amplitudes, it has to be bounded by constant. Also, six-point amplitude has to be bounded by e to the minus two. By using these, con these bounds, uh, we can show that high sigma model is UV complete if and only if g2 is equal to g1 square and lambda is equal to m square g1 over two. So in this way, part of the p unitarity fix the coefficients g2 and lambda uniquely. Okay. So we have some non-trivial relation between, between UV parameters. So finally, we would like to match the UV data with the IR data by integrating out sigma field. So after integrating out, after integrating out this field, we obtain EFT parameters of this form. So for example, speed of sound is captured by uh, the G1, mixing G1 and the mass of sigma. On the other hand, uh, cubic coupling M3 contains more parameters, lambda, G1, G2, and M. So this is before impo imposing part of the unitarity constraint. So now let's see what happens if we impose part of the unitarity constraint. So one can easily see that under this condition, M3 is always zero. So by requiring UV consistency, we can show that M3 is zero if we have only one heavy scalar field at UV in UV theory. So in this way, we have shown that uh, if your UV theory has only Goldstone boson pi and heavy scalar sigma, then our EFT has to be on this straight line. In other words, in order to go away from this line, we need more fields at UV. And actually, uh, we can do something similar for, for series with multiple heavy scalars, uh, but uh, this is still a work in progress, and hopefully we would like to come back to this type of workshop with more results in near future. So anyway, my point was that part of the unitarity is useful uh, to get some information of UV series. So that's all for the second part. And now let me summarize my talk. In this talk, I discussed two complementary approaches to drawing a country map of the EFT landscape. In the first part, I discussed positivity bounds and the beyond. The main message there was that effective interactions which are not constrained by positivity bounds are interesting proof of detailed UV formation, such as the spin of heavy particles uh, behind effective interaction. An important direction along this line is to generalize it to higher point amplitudes and EFT of inflation, which is crucial to discuss observable non gaussianity with FNL bigger than 1. In the second part, I discussed the implication of part of TV unitarity. Since part of TV unitarity is based on stronger assumptions compared to positivity bounds, so it enabled us to prove the regime FNL bigger than 1. Uh, this is a nice point about part of the unitarity. And it will be interesting to generate the argument to UV spinning fields in addition to UV scales. 
So in this way, by drawing a country map of the EFT landscape, we can get UV information, such as spins of heavy particles and also the number of species present at UV. By pushing this direction and combining it with future observation, I believe that we can enlarge the scope of cosmological collider, and we can get more information about high energy physics, which will be very nice. I think that there are several interesting directions to explore in the near future, so I would be very, I would be very happy if you are interested in and we can discuss together during the workshop. Okay, so that's all my talk, so thank you very much, and see you at the workshop.